All right, Acts chapter 27 today. When it was decided that we, and we need to remember that Luke's the author here, so we would sail for Italy, they proceeded to deliver Paul and some other prisoners to a centurion of the Augustan cohort named Julius. And embarking in an Adramitian ship, which was about to sail to the regions along the coast of Asia, we put out to sea accompanied by Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica. And Atramidium uh, was a city on the northwest coast of Asia Minor, Asia Minor or uh, modern-day Turkey, near Troas. Uh, verse 3. The next day we put in at Sidon, and Julius treated Paul with consideration and allowed him to go to his friends and receive care. From there we put out to sea and sailed under the shelter of Cyprus because the winds were contrary. When we had sailed through the sea along the coast of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we landed at Myra in Lycia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy, and he put us aboard it. When we had sailed slowly for a good many days, and with difficulty had arrived off Snidus, since the wind did not permit us to go farther, we sailed under the shelter of Crete, off Salmon, and with difficulty sailing past it, we came to a place called Fair Havens, near which was the city of Lazia. Verse 9. When considerable time had passed and the voyage was now dangerous, since even the fast was already over, uh, referring to the fast for the Day of Atonement, Paul began to admonish them. And said to them, Men, I perceive that the voyage will certainly be with damage and great loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also our lives. But the centurion was more persuaded by the pilot and the captain of the ship than by what was being said by Paul. Because the harbor was not suitable for wintering, the majority reached a decision to put out to sea from there, if somehow they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, facing southwest and northwest, and spend the winter there. Verse 13. When a moderate south wind came up, supposing uh, that they had attained their purpose, they weighed anchor and began sailing along Crete, close in shore. But before very long, there rushed down from the land a violent wind called Uroquilo. And when the ship was caught in it and could not face the wind, we gave way to it and let ourselves be driven along. Running under the shelter of a small island called Clada, we were scarcely able to get the ship's boat under control, referring to the dinghy. Verse 17. After they had hoisted it up, they used supporting cables in undergirding the ship, and fearing that they might run aground on the shallows of Sirtis, they let down the sea anchor, and in this way let themselves be driven along. The next day, as we were being violently storm-tossed, they began to jettison the cargo, which means they started throwing stuff overboard. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. Since neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small storm was assailing us, from then on all hope of our being saved was gradually abandoned. When they had gone a long time without food, then Paul stood up in their midst and said, Men, you ought to have followed my advice, and not to have set sail from Crete, and incurred this damage and loss. Yet now I urge you to keep up your courage, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship." For this very night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood before me, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted you all those who are sailing with you. Therefore, keep up your courage, men, for I believe God that it will turn out exactly as I have been told. But we must run aground on a certain island. But when the fourteenth night came, as we were being driven about in the Adriatic Sea, about midnight, the sailors began to surmise that they were approaching some land. They took soundings and found it to be 20 fathoms, and a little farther on they took another sounding and found it to be 15 fathoms. Fearing that we might run aground somewhere on the rocks, they cast four anchors from the stern and wished for daybreak. But as the sailors were trying to escape from the ship and had let down the ship's boat into the sea, on the pretense of intending to lay out anchors from the bow, Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, 
Unless these men remain in the ship, you yourselves cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the ship's boat and let it fall away. Which is a great display of faith right there. Until the day was about to dawn, Paul was encouraging them all to take some food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day that you have been constantly watching and going without eating, having taken nothing. Therefore I encourage you to take some food, for this is for your preservation, for not a hair from the head of any of you will perish. Having said this, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of all, and he broke it and began to eat. All of them were encouraged, and they themselves also took food. All of us in the ship were 276 persons, so we're talking about a big ship here. When they had eaten enough, they began to lighten the ship by throwing out the wheat into the sea. When day came, they could not recognize the land, but they did observe a bay with a beach, and they resolved to drive the ship onto it if they could. And casting off the anchors, they left them in the sea while at the same time they were loosening the ropes of the rudders and hoisting the foresail to the wind. They were heading for the beach, but striking a reef where, uh, where two seas met, they ran the vessel aground, and the prow struck fast and remained immovable, but the stern began to be broken up by the force of the waves. The soldiers' plan was to kill the prisoners, so that none of them would swim away and escape, but the centurion, wanting to bring Paul safely through, kept them from their intention, and commanded that those who could swim should jump overboard first and get to land, and the rest should follow, some on planks and others on various things from the ship. And so it happened that they all were brought safely to land. Land ho, mateys. So let's, uh, let's see what happens here. God bless you. Have a great day.